We're pseudo random. We can go randomly wherever we want. Shit literally starts hitting the fan left and right, and you're like, whoa, whoa. Because I'm all about lesbian middle school girls. I love that. If you keep going with this shit, I'm just going to drop you from the Skype call. I couldn't care. Yes. You'd have to talk about the cupcakes. Hey, you know what? You forget names, I mispronounce names. It's a circle of life. Everything was sunshine and rainbows. That doesn't sound very Catholic. God damn it, it's a Kotsky. This is a segue, by the way. Ah, ah. Alright, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. I'm your host, CJ. Here with me are the usual co hosts I usually have. We have Dan. Hey, I feel terrible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just had cold stone ice cream. I feel super full. But it was good. It was so. worth it. Yeah. <laughs> good Good to know. Good to know. Uh, we also have Roberto. Totally not jealous over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Marble Slab's better anyway. It's okay. And yeah, we uh, had cake and ice cream at work today. Yeah. All right. We also have uh, Clecker. Hey, how's it going? Not jealous. I had cake and ice cream. I had party time ice cream. You guys don't even know what that is. Yeah, I don't think I do. Alrighty then. <laughs> um, I actually had some uh, some cupcakes about an hour ago that I got from Sweet, which is this amazing place in, in Waterford here, where I think it's... Uh, oh, God, I forgot her name. I don't know. It's it's some, like, one of the more famous, like, cupcake-making people, and it's fucking delicious. Right. Uh, so good. Yeah, cupcakes are good. Is Not... she hot? I don't remember because I've, I've, I think I've seen her on like the Food Network before and like the challenges, but I don't remember. How how is the fact if she's hot or not influence her food, Clecker? I'm matter, curious Dan. about your line of thought there. Doesn't matter, Dan. <laughs> anyway, All right. doesn't matter. Regardless, I need to finish the intro. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, those of you who don't know, the podcast is where we just talk about you know cupcakes and. Ice yep. cream the whole time. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> no, no, it's um, we we uh, we talk about anime and manga. Kind of <laughs> shut up, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to finish right. this. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, we talk about anime and manga. It's um, kind of works like a book club. We recommend stuff to each other, then we break up the parts, and then we we watch them in those segments. Usually about uh, twelve episode segments for like the anime. Then I mean, it varies based on the manga because they have different length chapters. Um. One thing that comes along with this is because we, we talk about a lot of other anime and compare stuff and manga and everything like that, not only the, the main uh, anime or manga of the week, but a lot of others just expect pretty much anything to be fair game for spoilers, because we're, we're, we try to typically say we're going to spoil something, but we, we forget half the time. Um, but the, the main thing that's going to be heavily spoiled today is uh, the second half of the first season of Bakuman, which is episodes 13 through 25, and... Um, yeah, so um, that takes us into uh, our agenda for the day. What we uh, what we're going to be talking about is, like I said, episodes thirteen through twenty five of Bakuman. Then after that, we're going to go into um, any other anime or manga we've been watching or reading throughout the week that's not on the list here. And um, then after that, we're going on to our random topic of the day, which um, uh, what's this one? Uh, what anime you wish got like another season that like. Pretty much, like, what are the ones that just got cut off at, like, the worst cliffhanger ever? Or just seemed like it had so much more, like, a lot more manga or whatever source material. And it's just like, man, I I want so much more of this. Um, Alright, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing today. And, uh, yeah, let's just jump right into uh, Bakuman here. So, how, how'd you guys like that ending there? I'm pretty happy. That was quite the cliffhanger, I'd say. But, it... it- I don't know. To me, I wanted more out of the ending, but I I'm happy with it. But I wanted more, and Dude. maybe I'll get that in another season. Yeah. You have but... two more seas- two more full seasons of Stealth Clacker. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. still wanted more, Dan. Well, go watch more then. I will, CJ. I will. I I was just so happy because they um these for those who don't know what uh what Bakuman is here I kind of forgot to do the intro for it it really revolves around these two guys that start off in middle school who are just trying to uh, become mon- manga artists together where one can draw really well and one can come up with really good stories and they just work really well together and their their goal is to get serialized and have a anime 
by the time they graduate high school. So that way they can, um, like one of the, the, the guy who does the drawings essentially has this, this promise with a girl where if he becomes popular enough and actually has an anime, she's going to be the role of the heroine in it. And, um, then they're going to get married, even though they've never talked before. It's weird. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> the, the ending we're talking about here where they, where they leave off and everything that's fucking awesome is their editor finally calls them. Like, when they've been waiting on this whole serialization thing. Because they've been trying the entire fucking, like, 25 episodes of this. Which is actually years in their time, I believe. And, yeah. um... It is they, two years, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Their their editor finally calls them and just, like, congratulations. And they just lose their shit. They don't even, like, pay attention to right. what else he says. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, they finally got serialized. So, it's it's pretty great. Anyway, that's the the quick description there. If somebody else wants to... Talk about some parts that they liked, because I could probably talk all day about it. I was happy that they got serialized. Like, I was I was ecstatic. I was like, yeah, they finally did all this out of all, like, after all the renditions they did of their, like, manga, after all this shit they went through, they got it, they did it, they won that competition, they're gonna get serialized. I was happy about that. Oh, yeah. I, I was so I scared wanted, they weren't going to. I wanted Azuki to... Do something, but she didn't. She she didn't. She didn't. She, she called him. There. Yeah, she actually <laughs> called him and told him congratulations. That's the yeah, most yeah. they've ever spoken. I think. Yeah, right. it is. <laughs> it is. But what it's what more something. could you expect that her to do, man? You know her. She's like the most shy girl in the world. And it's not that. that she's the most shy girl in the world. If she wanted to, she could definitely be not as shy to Mashiro, but. She is, and the reason she is is because of the promise, and yeah. I, I'll respect that, I'll respect that, it's just, if by the end of the third season, they are not together, I will be very, very <laughs> upset, Dan. Yeah. I will come <laughs> after you, Dan. <laughs> just it, Dan, no, no one else, not the, <laughs> right. not the creator or anything, just kill it, Dan. Right, <laughs> just you justify yeah. this, though, like, even looking at the first season as a whole, you kind of see them slowly develop a relationship where they go from not interacting with each other at all to when they're on in the, in the first half still they start writing notes on each other's notebook or something in class and then they change numbers and start texting each other all the time and like he writes this super long text and she answers in like 10 seconds or something oh and it's like half a sentence it's not even a full sentence right it's yes. great. <laughs> he's so <laughs> until, depressed from that too until she ultimately calls him at the end of the first season so the same way you you saw somewhat of a, a like very slow development you could probably expect and i'm not spoiling anything here hopefully but maybe you can expect it to keep going you know so. well it definitely yeah, seems like they're gonna keep hindsight. developing sorry what were you gonna say roberto i was just gonna say that's just hindsight really yeah yeah i mean yeah i i really hope it keeps progressing and uh, i'm surprised like i i guess because i've never because one of the most unique things about this uh this anime which i mean it was a manga it was originally a manga um is the fact that they're showing all these different processes and how many like th- like like hoops that people have to jump through to actually even even not even just get serialized, just get like even somewhat put in for potentially making it to like their right. their like second like book thing or whatever. Like the 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 I think it's like uh, what do they call next. it? Jack next or whatever yes. in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to work, all, do all this shit and get so many stuff in there before they even, can even potentially get into the one that gives them the interest to potentially get into the main one. And right. it's ridiculous. I liked how um, there was a part where um, Mishiro was being a, um assistant to one of the guys. I forget which one. Oh, there was AG. two more two more other guys. And those guys like had rewards and stuff like that. And, like, they won rewards previously, yet they were still having trouble actually becoming serialized. And it kind of shed a lot of light on the subject of how actually truly hard this really is. So that, I, that made me happy look, seeing that. Right, oh, just yeah. to give the names of those characters so that we can talk a little bit more of them. The younger one, which is, I think he's 17 years old, he's Fukuda something. I don't remember the other name. And uh, the old guy is called Nakai. I think he's almost 40, isn't he? Yeah, something he's thirty three. Like yeah, that that was like one of the most tragic parts of it, as far as showing just how how long it can take you to even be considered for serialization. Is dude, dude's tw- uh, thirty three, and he's been doing stuff since he was like a teenager or something like that, and he's he's pretty much a professional uh, assistant now because he's been doing it so long, and he he can't 
he he hasn't been able to get his stuff serialized and it's it's actually quite tragic because i mean the uh, mashiro ends up walking in on him at one point like crying himself to sleep because he wants to be like serialized so bad yeah and that guy's story is pretty sad especially when you think about how like he's actually supposedly a pretty good drawer you know and there's one point where he talks about how like he can draw any kind of scenery in like just a few minutes or something uh, oh yeah dude's that, dude's brilliant yeah and that is just to show that like maybe if you're not like the right place at the right time with the right idea you may just never make it yeah it definitely seems like um one of, one of the big things that helped uh the main two guys a lot seemed like it was uh hitori which was their um he was their editor he was the first guy to see yeah. their stuff and he, he's been helping them out like crazy he's been i mean he's been harsh on him a few times and everything but where he needs to be right like, like whenever he was making him uh like what what did you guys think of whenever he made him do like a full like good quality name every two weeks along with when they're trying to win one of the awards oh that makes sense i mean they have to be ready for serialization yeah that was that was crazy because like mishira was losing sleep trying to make up these names and stuff like that and it was it was it showed how much actual effort he actually put into becoming serialized and everything like that yeah it wasn't just him losing sleep either. It was like consecutive days of nothing where he damn near passed out walking in there at one point trying to like hand in one of the uh one of the stuff to get looked at by the editor. Like he almost collapsed on the street there. It was it was ridiculous. Like that that dude has some fucking determination. Right. Yes. He's got a very hot woman waiting for him, so of course he's gonna have determination. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. By the way. Oh, go ahead, man. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, by the way, she's we well, started to see her doing some stuff this season as well, if I oh, remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, because she had, she actually got into an anime, and um, she she actually ended up being like one of the three most popular characters, even though she had at most like two to five lines per episode yeah. for the first <laughs> season or whatever. They even had her doing like the the closing song for the second season with like two of the other girls, and she just like blew up in popularity. And it's showing that she's doing really well. Because like, that's one thing I love is it's showing not only their progression through trying to become manga artists, but it's actually showing hers as well, trying to become a voice actor. And apparently things are going better for her than they have for the other guys right now. Yeah. Uh, one thing I was going to mention before, though, that was pretty great is, uh, um, and I think it's the second half, it starts showing this more, but you actually get to see a little bit more of the background of Mashiro and her, which I forgot her name. Is it like Akagi? Azuki. Uh, Azuki. 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 All right, Azuki. Yeah. Um, you get to see more of her relationship with uh, Mashiro, where they they like actually met in grade school and everything, like elementary school, where they originally saw each other and they just kind of stared at each other for like an hour or something. It was it was ridiculous, and they've <laughs> they've always been like looking at each other and been like for some reason like it was like love at first sight back in elementary school. So they both like fucking loved each other, but never been able to talk. And she's like the school's like quote unquote like angel, like the most beautiful girl in the school and everything. And yeah, like seeing, seeing their background with that has been ridiculous. Like it's crazy seeing just how popular and like beautiful she actually was compared to everyone else. And she's just gonna fucking marry this one guy if he becomes popular enough to make an anime. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Did you guys change your opinions about Eiji this time? Yes. I like him a lot more. He's fucking. He's actually pretty hilarious and pretty cool. Yeah, he's just not just that weirdo kid, uh, but he seems more of like a rival, and he does show some respect by being a good sport to the other two and wanting to have competition and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I definitely love the first time they, that the the two main guys actually meet him. Then he finds out who they were, and he starts calling him sensei, and he's like, "Oh my god, I absolutely loved." Uh, I think it's like. Time is money or something like that. I forgot the fucking name. Money, money and intelligence. intelligence. Money and intelligence. There we go. I wasn't close at all, but it doesn't matter. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he he was like so. He he told them he fucking loved their stuff and everything, and um, he looked forward to working with them and wanted them to teach him things and stuff. And it was like crazy. Like he he's definitely a different character than what I thought he would be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really appreciate it as well when Mashiro goes to help him out, and as soon as he gets there. I think it takes like a few minutes to Eiji actually realizes that he's there helping him out because he's so into like the manga that he's drawing and everything. And as soon as he notices, he's like, I, I think for a minute he's like, wait, what are you doing here? Why are you not writing your manga? You know, you, you yeah. don't deserve to be here as an assistant. Well, he's not, he didn't, not that he didn't deserve to, he was too good to essentially. Yeah, yeah essentially, yeah. Yeah, that, that was something that was pretty funny. Like, cause that, I think that's actually 
the the second time. I mean, he starts calling him sensei like the entire time and everything. And uh, yeah, there, there's more fun poked at the uh, the 33 year old guy at that point, which which made me still feel so bad for him. Right? Yeah, I feel so bad for that guy, man, because like they're so harsh to him in some points. <laughs> Well, it's mainly just the the one guy, the fucking gray haired yeah. dude. Yeah, Fukuda. Yeah, I, I apologize to the listeners. By the way, I can never remember names. I call them by something identifiable by them. <laughs> right, that's fine. <laughs> well, I I just don't. I'm sure at one point, if fucking listeners are gonna get pissed off at me about it, but it's it's gonna continue to happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm way worse with names than you are, but you you at least half know them. You just mispronounce everything. <laughs> Yeah. Fair enough. Uh. Oh shit! I just remembered something. Isn't there like a scene where Fukuda goes over why to love Rui is his favorite? Uh, yes, he did. Or something. Oh yeah, that was so good. He he's so excited. and He absolutely loves like edgy stuff and everything. And he was talking about that and how it was like pretty much like the perfect type of anime for like uh, shonen and everything. And then he just goes into this huge spiel for like five minutes talking about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, what did people think of the relationship between Takagi and, what was her name, Miyoshi? Miyoshi. Miyoshi. Oh, that was fucking great. I loved her. Like, cause, uh, did, did the, the scene happen, um, with his quote-unquote two girlfriends in the first or second half of the season? First. 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 Okay, so we already talked about that. Yeah, this, this one had a park scene where they ended up kissing and a couple other things, um... She she pretty much ends up becoming their like producer. I'm pretty sure isn't that the producer? Well, she's no. she's more of their assistant as far as like bringing them food and drinks and cleaning up after them and all that in their studio. And she just generally helps them out a lot. And um, she also does a lot of research for them because they the the manga they end up getting serialized was um, a detective one, right? Yeah, it was, yeah a, it was a mystery one. And she ended up like watching hours and hours of like, mystery stuff every day, just so that way she could give them, essentially, the cliff notes. That way they could, um, they could use it for inspiration. So that way they could, uh, they could spend more time actually writing stuff. And... Right. I, I still love how, like, jealous and mad she gets at him all the time. It's so good. She's, she's a great character. Something that I do remember happens at this season, if I am right, is that while Mashiro is with Eiji, being his assistant and everything, that's where you actually get to see a lot of the... Takagi and Miyoshi scenes and I think that at one point Mashiro sees that he's helping her out with something and he gets like it's not that he gets jealous but like he starts considering that maybe Takagi isn't working hard enough to figure out like the new story or something but it's not like it yeah. lasts too, too long oh, yeah gets... you know Go ahead, I, I was actually wondering when like the story was going to have some sort of conflict because from the get-go they were pretty much buddy buddy and everything was sunshine and rainbows and then, yeah, you're right, he did kind of notice him working on a, on another story for her, you know, and it almost seemed like he was ignoring their work. But in reality, they were both thinking the same thing with the mystery stuff. Yeah, he, he just couldn't get it on paper and stuff. He had writer's block. Like, he was, it actually showed several scenes of him just, like, in the middle of the night, just, like, fucking pulling his hair out super mad because he couldn't come up with stuff. Like, he was stressed out as hell. Also... Um, Mashiro was kind of jealous of Takagi because of the relationship he had with Miyoshi and how he kind of didn't have that relationship with Azuki. Oh yeah, he saw him kissing and everything. Yeah, they he's, he's the one that saw him kissing in the park and I thought that was interesting. And I was like, come on, come on, show more of Azuki relationship. I know he wants it, but they didn't show any more of it. They just showed, it, they showed slow progression. And maybe it'll be fantastic when it actually happens because it, of the slow progression. It but, didn't help also that Takagi was like, you know, well, if you love someone, you should just be with them. You know, it's like a normal thing. Oh, kind yeah. And he, called, he called Mashura weird and everything with that. Like, yeah. He insulted him really bad with that. I, I felt bad for him at that point. Like, it, it was bad. Yeah, that's essentially the only moment, at least the only moment on the first season where they kind of have that, like, harsh reaction to each other or whatever yeah but it didn't last long if i remember well yeah i think like they broke up and got together in like the same episode well just to clarify it was um the the two manga artists essentially separated as far as working together yeah not yeah. not the not um god damn it i forgot their names the fucking okay. writer and the chick that he was dating god damn it okay, i'm and... so bad at this today okay, and Miyoshi. Miyoshi or yes yes them okay. 
I just wanted to clarify that, even though I probably confused the people more, but whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at this. I don't know why you guys decided to make me the, the host of this. <laughs> <laughs> because no, usually you're not you bad with it. names, CJ. I'm usually always bad with actually, names. No, you've been very good the past, like, couple episodes. You can do it. I know you can. I believe in you. I Reference to Gurn Logan. I'm just going to the Wikipedia. I'm going to look up all the fucking character names and just reference them. Uh, all right, so I think we talked a little bit about the, the artists and the, and the characters and everything. And actually, Fukuda is a character that I do like a lot. And I can tell you that you see a lot of him on the, on the next few seasons as well. Uh, he is a little bit of a... Like, he's a little bit arrogant in the beginning, but it's, it's kind of cool. Like, he does have good intention behind that. And they even help Eiji at one point. Like, figuring out something on it for his next, next chapter or whatever. Yeah, it was chapter 5. They were like, dude, you're just writing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. it's It's gotta be different. Because was... he has me really interested with one of the things he said. That he, that like, he wants to change Jack. So, yep. I'm kind of looking forward to that to see what, what he means by that. Right. Yeah. Also, but also, uh, an interesting part of this that, that we saw in this half of the show that I don't think we've seen we've seen as much before is that you start seeing a little bit more of the editors competing with each other as well. So, like, I think there's one point where the like both Mashiro and Takagi and Eiji have a manga on the same competition or something, and that at one point, like, there's the the preview results or whatever, and Mashiro and Takagi are in first, and then on the final results. Eiji is in first, but you kind of see a little bit of back and forth between Hattori and the other guy, like uh, Eiji's editor. Oh yeah, I love the rivalries between the editors. That's actually one thing I was not expecting, is you actually get to see a little bit of the rivalries and even the growth from them, which is really yeah. cool. And granted, it's not, like, it's not like something super big, it's kind of subtle, but still like just seeing their looks to each other from time to time, you know, like when someone got, gets first place or whatever and that kind of thing. Yeah, they just look back and forth, essentially, just like, ha look what I did, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great, because it reminds me of um, how, how me and my friends, hell, how, me and you guys have fucking been before in, in school and everything. Right. Uh, so good. And why do you think, overall, of the, kind of the, the last episode of the series, where they had that whole serialization meeting, where they were deciding which mangas to, like, to stop, and which mangas to continue, and all that? You get to, you got to see a little bit more of the the chief the the uh, editor in chief, which is a character that I I kind of like as well. Yeah, that that was a fucking tense scene, man. That that whole thing because you actually see uh, most of the most of the characters and everything um, actually have their stuff at least considered for the uh, for serialization and everything. Yeah, and like they get put into the maybe pile essentially which is like they give everybody a yes first and then they go through the, all the yeses and cut them down to a certain amount and um yeah that that shit was fucking tense like what did uh what do you think of that uh roberto yeah i mean i'll say the same thing it I was like are they gonna make it or are they are they not gonna make it because they were up against some pretty good competition with the the two other people they introduced the the chick which her name is Oh, what did they introduce the chick already? Yeah, they did. Uh, she worked with she's um, working with the old guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so I'm a, I'm a little lost. There here. we go. Yeah. yeah. I could swear she was introduced on the second season for some no. reason. One thing, but, okay. I don't like her. One thing about that, she reminds me so much. Like, I'm going to fucking say this now. I'm probably going to be wrong, but I'm going to watch more of this at one point. I'm going to say that she could potentially be the... Uh, the other girl that thought she was dating um, fucking Takagi because she acts a lot like her and she looks like her with just a different color hair and like she speaks a lot like her so I'm like man wouldn't that be some fucking crazy shit if that ended up being her and I don't know I'm probably completely wrong but I hope that I'm right that would be Cause it was funny because that's, that's the reason she, she ended up not wanting to date him and everything I, I don't know if I should say something or not. No, you shouldn't. Man, <laughs> I don't know. It's, okay, it's kind of obvious that she's older. Up. It's kind of obvious that she's well, an older woman. She's not a high school girl. I don't, know. I don't know about that, Roberto. Only time can tell. And by time, I mean only future seasons can tell. I'm I'm probably going to fucking binge watch this again over the weekend. Because, I mean, 
that's that's just what I do over the weekends. It was really hard not to actually read more because last week was fucking killing me because like, oh my god, I know they got serialized, I know this happened. She fucking called right. him and everything and it, it drove me crazy last week. So I'm I, I decided to right. no, I'm I'm surprised wait. that you guys have controlled yourselves because I couldn't. Like as soon as I finished the last episode of first season, I put the next episode of the, the first episode of the second season straight through because I was actually very curious to see what the new editor was gonna be like as well. So, would you guys like to to give kind of your predictions to that, or what are you expecting from from that last review? I mean, it was really sudden, and it feels like almost it was planned, in a sense. Hmm. Because I mean, how did he got so far with these guys, you know, from the ground up, and then like they finally did it, they reached their goal, and he's like, "Yeah, here's this guy. I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but whatever." Well, he literally <laughs> told them if they got popular with a, or if they got serialized with a more popular style. Uh, manga he was gonna like give them over to another editor like he even asked them that when they were thinking about switching over to an action manga i must have missed that yeah because he, he's pretty much just following up on exactly what he said in i think it was the first half of the the season i think it was like episode five or six something like that yeah i think i remember something like i i don't know if he specifically says you know like if you do this then you're gonna have another editor but he essentially explains how it happens with a lot of other guys you know like it's very oh. common that after you get serialized or whatever people get moved around and you could get another editor but i don't remember the details as well no he he literally told them he was like if you guys make it with something like this i'll give you to another editor are you guys okay with that like literally like as like almost like an ultimatum type of thing like he was actually pretty brutal when he said that Oh, yeah, I think that's when, like, he was really clear about not wanting them to go that way, right? Yeah, because he, he didn't want it to kill their creative talent and everything, because they had stuff that, like, most other manga artists just don't have because of their right. writing style. That's something really good about this part of the series as well, because it, it, it goes a lot into developing your own style and how, like, should you go after what's popular or should you go and develop what you do best? And they kept trying to go after what's what's popular and they couldn't make something good even when they tried really hard and everything. And when they kind of found something in the middle by the end, which was the mystery detective story, that that, that was when they they finally got it and everything. I will give you guys that Miura, who is the new editor, is a very different character from Hatori. I'm not going to say anything else about him, but... I'm going to miss Hattori. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also not going to say that Hattori's gone from the story, because he isn't necessarily. But, you know, he Miura is a new character that kind of, like, I think kind of influence, influentiates the plot more than Hattori does, in my opinion. Okay. But just because, you know, while Hattori was essentially just, like, trying to get there on the right track... And, mm -hmm. and and making them improve their abilities and everything, Miura may like take things to different ways. But I I I shouldn't say anything else. So try to get them to write what sells and keeps them serialized. Maybe maybe not. How about you just watch it and find out, Roberto? Yeah, <laughs> maybe I will. That's that's what I want to do. I don't want. He does add a, like a very like different dynamic to the series, and because of that, like I like, like I don't necessarily like him as a character. Uh, let me put it like this. I don't necessarily like his character, but he has, like, a very interesting personality that probably, like, takes the series on interesting twists, so. I think it'll actually be good because that's one thing I don't want to happen with this story is I don't want it to get stale and be the same thing over and over. Them failing, trying again, failing, trying again, or whatever. Right. So I'm hoping that'll that'll add more to it and make it, uh, or keep it keep it new and fresh, I guess. Right. And you'll get to see more of the girl artist that you guys talked about. You will get to see more of Okuda and Nakai. You get, like, there'll be a lot of new characters introduced as well, including one that you got a glimpse of at the very end of oh, the yeah, first Oh yeah, the season. fucking, like, business yes. guy that just dropped his job to be good and to make a manga yeah. on, on, like, in a whim. It was ridiculous. He's fucking awesome. That guy is probably, like, my favorite side, side character of the series, but you guys will see more of him. So I honestly yeah. thought he was gonna attack them, because yes. he, like, heard Bunny, <laughs> and he's like, what, Bunny? <laughs> I thought he was going to attack him outside the train. <laughs> oh my god, that, that dude was so fucking creepy. Every time he popped up for like 30 <laughs> seconds and just said something, it's like, I don't want, like, I would never want to be around that guy. That dude's so fucking creepy. <laughs> he's creepy, but he's awesome as well. You anyway, we should like probably stick to what? Yeah, I do. We should probably stick to, to what we watched so far. So I'm yeah. taking this a little bit too far. Anyways, so the last point I have to make is... Mr. Rockstar. Yep. 
Oh, oh that fucking that dick. He was such a dick. Oh my god, he was such a dick. I'm so glad he fucking got destroyed. Oh. Such underhanded tactics constantly. I was like, I hate you so much. Yep. I have completely erased that arc from my mind for some reason, so could you guys just go over really quick, like, what happens? Uh, so, when, oh, you go ahead, Roberto. Alright, so this musician pretty much drops his career, well, not drops, he pauses his career and says that he's going to be in this manga competition and how his fans should totally uh, vote for him, regardless of whatever. Right. They don't... There's a dude with, like, thousands of followers, so if he right. says it's that, only... he gets tons of votes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, like, uh, all the other guys, Fukuda, Mashiro, and all them go to, like, Jack, and they're like, this is bullshit, this, they can't, you can't do this, you can't allow this. Yeah. I still love what the, the editor-in-chief said like that, where he's just like, if things are interesting, people will vote for it, and it'll get serialized. So yeah. he's just like, if your guy's stuff is better than his, it doesn't fucking matter, because your stuff will be better than his. Yeah, I, I really like that, that character, by the way, because he... Like, he seems very harsh, but he also has, kind of has, like, the right opinion and has a good point, you know? Yeah. I mean, you can tell he's been at it for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want to go ahead and finish up with the conclusion of that arc, though, Roberto? Oh, yeah, so then they all kind of, like, hear that, that if they're better, you know, they'll win, so they all scramble to pretty much redo their names just to get it submitted for the for the Golden Cup or whatever, the Future Cup. And then pretty much they all wreck that guy. He doesn't get enough votes. He doesn't even, even make close. top four. Yeah. He's like, he, he just gets so fucked so hard. And he gets so pissed. Like, he smashes the guitar and everything. It's great. Uh, but yeah, that's um what they actually put in for that award, though. That ends up actually being what uh what was put in for the, the serialization meeting. So that way they could see if they were going to be serialized. Oh, okay. I believe. Is that right? Yep, that's yeah. right. Well, because they all ended up tying for, like, first place in the cup. Well, two or of the guys. At least in approval in, like, their ratings, popularity. Yeah, it was the, the first time ever that that cup award thing had two first place winners. And it was uh, it was definitely Mashiro and Takagi for one of them. And I think it was... Um, it's Fukuda. Yeah, Fukuda yeah. was the other one. Which is uh, something we didn't mention before. But AG actually ranked them in his head, and he's like, "Oh yeah, two of them are gonna tie, and one of them's third. Yeah. And then it so happened to yeah, be that dude, way. Dude is a fucking genius, right? He is. Well, he's called a genius like fucking fifty times throughout the series yeah. too. So they kind of set it up where he's he's that much of a genius. But no, like I really didn't expect him to be that right. Where they had a first ever tie for that though. That that was that was pushing it a little bit. Like I did not expect that. Yeah, that's right. And at the same time that he was kind of a genius, like he he was able to get help from the other guys as well at some point. So yeah, I mean, it's not like he is so beyond them or anything. Well, the thing is, as soon as they gave him the uh, the fucking tips and everything, he immediately applied them, and they were just like, "Oh my god, he this is this is way better than it should have been." Your first time adding these things, he really yes. is a genius. <laughs> it was crazy. <sighs> anyway, that's um. I think I'm pretty much covered everything I wanted to on this. Anybody else have anything else to bring up? Nope. I covered everything I wanted to. Roberto? No. Yeah, I think we got it. Well, what about you, Dan? Did, 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 did you go through all your notes, Roberto? Yeah. Make sure you, we didn't miss any story points this time or anything? Not anything major. But... Oh, did, did we miss bad stuff last time or something? Uh, We missed a few points last time that we should have talked about, but it's not a big deal. Ah, fuck it. We're fine. Yeah, this okay. we're we're not super professional. We'll be fine, you know. You know, half right. the storyline we missed. Whatever, not a big deal. Yeah, we start we start from the end, and then we end in the middle. We never cover the beginning. It's like <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I think that's like three times we've done that. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I opened up with that. We're the... pseudo random. We can go randomly wherever we want. Yeah, I'm gonna totally take like this uh, quote from Clacker and put it at the beginning of the podcast right now. <laughs> of course, of course. I just hope I haven't said anything super embarrassing yet that you're going to fucking pull off. <laughs> yet. You, yet. You guys are super afraid of that now. I did start the I'm last not. episode. With, well, nobody uh, else is because I'm the one you pull the worst shit from. <laughs> I mean, hell, one of them, I'm just like, man, I want to grab some boobs. And the other one's like fucking talking about jerking off or something like that. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, it was something about a group of guys. It was really yeah. gay. I remember it being really, <sighs> really gay. I guess because I'm the host, I'm the biggest target for all that shit, so whatever. Yeah, pretty much. No, no, you're not. You want Clacker just because he's Clacker. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. I'm much bigger target than you because I make myself a bigger target. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's about all we wanted to cover of that. So let's move on to the next topic. What uh, what anime Cupcakes. and manga we've been... <laughs> I did have a really good white raspberry one earlier. White chocolate <laughs> raspberry. But uh, <laughs> what other uh, anime and manga we've been watching, so... Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and start off, because why not? This will actually make you pretty happy, Dan, because uh, with what you've been talking about the past couple times, I think, made me really want to go back and watch it again, and I, um, I'm i about six into Amagami SS Plus, uh, rewatching that. Oh, okay. And I forgot that, like, one thing that was great is it actually made me like um, the fucking student council, like, president girl a lot more than... Um, than what I remembered liking her because I forgot that her her extension to this was actually really good. Right. Well, did did you specifically like like the way that she reacted to everything and kind of like was able to deal with all the pressure that she was receiving, all the things that she had to do, kind of very, I don't know, like maturely and coldly in a way. Well, I really or... like the I really like the underhanded like well how she handled the underhanded tactics from the other girl. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, like I get that's that. one yeah. thing I really liked is how she handled all that, and she pretty much like. Because um, there's going to be some spoilers to you, too. I don't really care, though. You'll whatever. It's fine. You'll it's watch it eventually. Because uh, like, the other girl ends up trying to, like, pretending to kiss uh, the, the guy and everything to make her jealous. Because they're both running for student council president. And um, she's trying to essentially break her emotionally so she fucks up and doesn't do well and everything. And uh, Ayatsuji ends up actually, like, dragging him, like, out to this fucking, uh, it's like some little shed on school grounds or whatever, throwing him in there, mm, and he's, yeah. like, he's so sad, and he's apologizing, and he's freaking out and everything, she just grabs him, like, kisses him and stuff, he's like, you calm down now? Yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah, I totally <laughs> didn't great. see that coming. Because she, she pretty much is just, like, I can't believe you fell for something that stupid, but she's not mad at him at all, which is great, because she actually understands, understands what happened, and she fully trusts him and stuff, which... So some of that stuff made me like her a lot more than I remembered liking her. Good. That what do you the, think about the other two arcs? The Ryoko was, was actually... I still don't like her very much. She's still better than fucking Sai, but... <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely ended up liking her arc a little bit better, where... Um, we finally got some more closure on that, yeah. right? So. Yeah, the, the closure definitely helped with that. And I actually just remembered I only got halfway through the, the uh, Nanasaki arc. Which is weird, because that's my favorite girl. Right. But, whatever. If I remember, well, hers is pretty good as well. Yeah. I'll finish watching that probably fucking this week or next week or whatever. Right, and then we can talk a little more about it. Great. Yeah. But yeah, I forgot how good the the extensions are to this. I'm glad glad you've been talking about it. It made me want to watch it again. Cool. That's awesome. Also, during the time that you were like... So I just started watching something that's going to make Dan really happy and everything or something like that. I was like, Code Geass, Code Geass, Code Geass, Code Geass. <laughs> no, when no I, I told you, when I watched that, it's going to make you unhappy because I'm going to fucking tear it apart. Let, let's wait for that moment then. Let's, we're <laughs> we're going to do it next time. We're definitely going to do it next time. Yeah. Uh, next time, you guys are going to read Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer and you're going to like it. I, I already like what I've read of it. You, you can, you can like down. it more, Dan. You that haven't even gotten to the Dan. best part. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't CJ. sound very Catholic. <laughs> very what? what? Whatever. Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's almost as bla- bad as Black Swan. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's right. <laughs> he did say that. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Anyway. We we like to make fun of Dan a little bit when he mispronounces things. It's it's pretty yep. great. We've been doing that since fucking college. Uh, so weird saying that now. It's like I can look back on college at a different time. Yeah, oh, well. it's weird to think about. Like to think that actually at this point, it's being about two years that we have yep. graduated, like from the graduation ceremony and everything. So. It's two years and three days, I believe. Yeah, probably. I don't remember the exact days, but yeah, about that. Yeah, you guys graduated in May. Me and Roberto graduated oh, yeah, that's right. in, in June. June. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. There's that. But yeah, man, time goes by pretty yeah. fast. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, I just remembered I caught up on some other some other manga stuff that I've been um that I've been reading. I caught up on Domestic Nakanojo and Fuka because I think a uh, yeah. I think a chapter of Fuka came out like today or yesterday or something. Like, have you been keeping up with those, Roberto? Uh, with the domestic, not Kanojo, I have. Holy shit, that fucking last chapter. Oh my god, dude. It fucking walks in on him, it's like, oh god, what's, oh. 
Oh, this, yeah, shit, it's gonna be some shit. Shit's going down. I am so excited because this this is um. Oh god, it sounds so fucking weird saying this, but I love the drama like this. But when I think about it, I fucking hate that I love it because this is pretty much a fucking soap opera. <laughs> In, in a sense, yeah. <laughs> oh god, but it's it's so good the drama going on with this. Like everybody should just go read Domestic and Akinojo if you like um love triangle stuff cuz holy shit this one is it's yeah. ridiculous. Well, Roberto's Mexican, so he's probably used to watching soap operas and everything. That's right. He's fucking racist. <laughs> there was uh, that Wolf Ferrell <laughs> movie that was making fun of Hispanic soap I operas. I love that movie actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I think I've ever watched it, that. But probably a good movie. What's the I, name I of just... that? Uh, Casa de mi padre. My father's okay. house. And Will Ferrell does the whole movie in Spanish. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes, awesome. that movie is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, Will Ferrell makes it so, like, ridiculous and crazy. Did, did he actually do good with the Spanish? Um, yeah. But it's it's kind of blatantly obvious. It's not his native tongue. But that just makes it all the better. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the majority of what I've been watching and reading. Oh, actually, I forgot. I, I actually decided to watch a couple more episodes of Log Horizon, and the fucking Valentine's Day episode was amazing. That one was so good. Like, I think you watched it, right, Roberto? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about that. Clucker will probably get pissed. I'll get so mad at you, CJ. I will get so mad because I guarantee you there's something with that's Akatsuki and God damn it, it's Akatsuki. It's Akatsuki. <laughs> hey, you know what? You forget names. I mispronounce names. It's a circle of life. It's, it's I mispronounce best girl, words. Though. You should you should remember best. Beat that. Come on. Uh, what did you say, Dan? No, no, I think forget about it. Oh, he said, said he said he's bad at English. <laughs> pronunciation. Yeah, Clacker said I mispronounce I mispronounce names. You forget names, and I said I mispronounce words. Beat that. Anyway. Nobody wants to. Yeah. <laughs> Roberto's the only normal one out of well, all of us. <laughs> at least I can spell. <laughs> I think it, it, I forgot Roberto. Like I can never remember. Is uh, what's your actual uh, like native tongue or what's your first Spanish. language? So Spanish. So so English is your second language, and you're better at English than the most of the rest of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this is the sad truth, everybody. My 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 teachers would be so proud to know that. <laughs> Uh, never mind. This is making me sad. Moving on, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much all I have there. What I've been uh, what I've been watching. You you will get to enjoy Klecker though. The um, the fucking Ninja Turtle in Log Horizon when he pops up, he's pretty cool. I probably will. Fucking Leonardo. Most, <laughs> most characters that Log Horizon has introduced, every single time they introduce someone else, I'm like, oh, that person's awesome. Or like you hate they... them because they want you to hate them. That's true. Because they're actually really good at that, too. Like, the idol, when I saw her, I was like, oh my god, she's amazing! She goes, like, in and out of Natsugu's armor. Like, how does she do that? Her? I'll wait to find out her secret. <laughs> uh, I'll just leave I it at that. Know. I think you already got to that. Have you watched her episode 12? Mm, I think so. Probably not. No, I don't think so. Oh, right, then, then you, let's, you... let's just save it. Yeah, her secret's fucking amazing. Oh, it's so hilarious. And it makes it even better with the fucking Valentine's Day episode. Oh, you're gonna love it. It does. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing. Darn it, guys. Now you're making me really want to watch this. At, l- at least watch through 13, because 13 okay. is still a good stopping point. Okay, I will do that. All right, so um, let's go ahead and go to you, Clacker. What else have you been watching or reading this week? I read a lot. So I read a lot of chapters that I neglected for a while. Um, uh, I read a series known as Kingdom, which is an interesting series because it kind of involves politics and warfare, and it kind of has a very nice blend in between the middle of the two and how they relate to each other. And then I also read up on Tower of God, uh, Gamer, and that was about it. Um, what I piece? also read the most up-to-date fairy tale sadly there's no one piece this week oh, oh no so... hell you ever live on without yeah. one piece <laughs> <sighs> i'll just have to wait for doflamingo to get his ass kicked next week did they just oh, randomly no. skip weeks still like uh they go on hiatus every now That's... and then hmm. i think they make what... the, they make the author take breaks for his health which is good because if oda oh. dies i will be so sad that's interesting then, then i don't want to spoil anything 
But you might see something like that at Bakuman. With oh god damn it, Dan! Well. <laughs> damn it, Dan! That's a fucking huge spoiler. What the fuck? That is <laughs> terrible, <sighs> Dan. I'm sorry. If you keep going with this shit, I'm just gonna drop you from the Skype call. Oh god, All right. <laughs> that's harsh. That's harsh. I don't Anyways. like spoilers like that because even though he doesn't tell me who, something like that's gonna fucking happen now. Somebody's somebody's at least going to the hospital, maybe dying. I don't fucking know, but they're not gonna die. They'll definitely go to the hospital because that's <sighs> super popular with manga artists. Like, God damn it! Health I'm not necessarily talking about the main overwork. characters, just so you know. Just stop. I, that Dan. doesn't matter. <laughs> that doesn't matter, and you're only making it worse, yes. Dan. Remember, there's Anyways. a note guy in the series. Damn! <laughs> <Shut> the <laughs> fuck up. God damn it! I'm I'm hovering over the little button to kick you out, Dan. Okay, I stopped, I stopped, I stopped. Roberto, what did you do this week? <laughs> so I watched the uh, Yuta Yuri OVA that came out recently. Oh shit, I should watch that. Yeah, you should. It's uh, it's pretty I'm good. Because I'm all about lesbian middle school girls. I love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the God girls decide to go camping in this episode. Oh, I'm already excited. And why? <laughs> damn it, damn. <laughs> Fucking damn it! I swear to God, if you don't put some of this idea. shit in the beginning of the fucking like intro, <laughs> you're, you're just you're just protecting yourself, man. Right. You, uh... <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Let's Sorry. please go let ahead, Roberto, Roberto continue, though. Yeah. So uh, they decide to go camping, and I, I wonder whose bright idea was it to let like eight or nine middle school girls just sleep in a forest by themselves? <laughs> and you can imagine that. Kyoko's up to her usual antics, messing right. with the other girls. So, yeah. you should check it out, Dan. Yeah, also, season three. Yeah. When is that coming out? Uh, they haven't Sometime. set a date yet, but they announced okay. that like it's official. They're gonna do season three. So, hell yeah. yeah, Dan. I'm starting to actually get a little bit scared for your sisters and everything. With some <laughs> Shut of the up! Stuff you've been saying. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I mean, you did love Kiss X Sis too. I I don't know, man. No, I do not love that. I watch that all the time, but I give it a five. But, <laughs> you watch it all the time, but you don't love it. Uh, so what What else have you been watching or reading, Dan? Or what uh, have you been watching or reading, yeah. rather? I would normally say nothing as far as anime goes, but I just remember that I did, in fact, catch up with Durarara this week because I had like four episodes uh, kind of on my backlog. So I just went back and watched that, and then I... I fucking love that series. Like that, the first season of that was already kind of like I already really liked it, and then I rewatched it recently, kind of building up hype for season two, and then I loved it even more. And now I'm watching season two and fucking loving it. And I do want to ask Roberto something. Do you think the main character, if if you if you're cut up as well, do you think yeah. he's gonna accept that that proposal or not? I don't know. He might just to protect other people because it seems uh, like they're gonna keep he, causing trouble. I kind of really want him to just like take it and become a like more of a badass on the show because right the cool thing about Dorada is that there are all like those different characters doing a lot of cool things, but the main character himself like he has power, but he doesn't really do yeah. much with it. So okay. I, I keep wishing that like he would do something else, that he would become like ha- have a bigger role in the series or anything. So he might at, at one point now. So I'm very excited for that, but. Even if he doesn't, like, all the other characters of this uh, series, especially the new ones that got introduced this season, like, I think they're holding together pretty well. I really like all of them. Like, the blonde girl, I think she's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like, the, the the weird guy that is always around her, like, he keeps asking, like, the random, most random questions, and she always has the answers and everything. I love the dynamic. Just, like, a bunch of, like, the, the blue-haired guy as well. And Anyway, I, I don't remember any names as well, but that's pretty good. So that's about it. All right. So I guess if no one else has anything, or else check anybody else have anything else? Nope. Nope. All right. Cool. Um. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, random topic of the day. Which let me find that. Uh... Pseudo. Oh yeah. Talk- topic. Whatever. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean uh, to correct you. Just like. Kind you've of been doing that a lot, opening. Dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the cupcake podcast. Yes, we love to talk about the cupcakes. Um, but yeah, we also we're gonna talk about uh, yeah, what's a, what's an anime you wish got another season? Um, pretty much like the the majority of them that uh, I imagine you guys are probably gonna bring up. The one of the most popular thing or most common things of this is where 
a manga gets turned into an anime and they have a season then they get cut off with like a cliffhanger but the manga keeps going but they never add any more to it so that's one of the most popular but it could be something else it could be something you just want to get see continued even if it like ended for a different reason but um I we'll go ahead and start. go first huh i want to start all right yeah go ahead with yours then so i have several but my very most important oh, one actually uh i'll, I'll go ahead and say this because i don't know I don't know how long these are going to go on. We all have a few of them, and we're just going to go kind of go around everybody getting one, and we're going to keep doing that till we pretty much run out of time here. Or Dan starts yelling at me because it's gotten too long and he has to end <laughs> it all. But um, yeah, we're just going to do one person at a time, really, and go from there. So you can go ahead, Clicker. Okay, so mine, my very first one is Spice and Wolf. So yep. my no doubt. my. Thing with Spice and Wolf was I loved the interaction between Holo and I forget the main characters. Craft Lawrence. Lawrence. Craft Lawrence. The interactions those two guys had, like those two had, were awesome. The yeah. amount of teasing Holo did to Lawrence was awesome. Everything was awesome. And then right as it looked like they were starting to build some relationship, the series ended. Yeah, worst fucking possible time. Because uh, I, I believe Holo's actually kind of what got me started on just strong women and Tsunda days in general, because she was she's much more of a playful one. And I, I don't know, there's just a lot of stuff about it. It's just like, she she's just a fucking brilliant character with her, her dynamics and everything. Like, there's just something about her that separates her from a lot of other characters. And part of the reason why that one is, like, really big for me as well is that it's actually, like, a hell of a lot of source material for that series, you know. When you look into the novels, I think they have adapted four novels. Every half season is one of the novels. And actually, there is, like, ten that were written or something like that. So, technically, they could make, like, at least three full seasons of that, you know. Like, more three seasons of that. And we just haven't heard anything for a long time. So, who knows if they ever will. Yeah, it makes me so mad. Because it was it was so good. I really wish they continued it. I went and uh, last year I saw a really good Holo cosplayer at a convention. Made me happy. I think I was there with you, wasn't I? Because I think I remember Probably. seeing that. I know Roberta was there, and she held an apple and everything, and I was like, "Yes." That was two years ago, actually. Was that two years ago, man? Yeah. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was the first AFO I went to, I believe. I just I came on like one of the days, but I didn't come the others. That yeah, I think we. I remember we did go to a convention. To, there was one convention that I was with you guys, but I don't remember which one it was. I have no idea. I think yeah. you went to uh, the UCF one, Dan, because yes. I don't remember. I, I don't. Oh, I didn't go to that one. Yeah. Okay. So you went to that one. Okay. But anyways, yeah, I really wish that got another season because. Of how just amazing it was in general. I mean, hell, even on fucking on Reddit, I think the, I think on Reddit the last like best girl contest they did fucking Holo won because I mean it's 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 one of the anime even if you're not into like romance or anything, pretty almost everybody ends up watching it at one point because it's just there's something about the story and the characters that is just so good. So like it's it's kind of sad, but this seems almost like one of the ones that seems like it would get like the least discussion out of it almost because everyone kind of just agrees it's like a universally known thing right and you guys have uh, talked a lot about the rom romance but also just the the merchant story and everything and the whole like economics of the series is fucking amazing as well like, oh yeah that point where, cool. yeah you guys to a point where it's actually pretty complex where lawrence is try having to like do all these different things and buying something with one kind of uh coin and then selling it with like some other kind or whatever just to like get profit and all that kind of stuff and it actually teaches like a lot of interesting ways to negotiate and just make money out of just good business so. yeah that negotiation skills it teaches a little bit of that it's pretty great <sighs> so any other comments or anything on spice and wolf which fucking everybody wants a new season of hell yeah yeah we do want a new season of it. that's about it come on japan do it starter do it <laughs> All right, yeah, dude, um, we should totally start Kickstarter. We should do it. We'll succeed. That that one probably would succeed like hell. You post that on like fucking Reddit and a few other places of like that have a like a big anime like page or whatever, it'll fucking blow up. Right. 
I, I, I don't think, I'm not sure if you can legally do that. No, you yeah. can't. <laughs> I don't think you can, but if you license. could. Oh, if you could, it would have been done already. Yes. Anyway, let's let's move on to Roberto here. What's what's one of yours, Roberto? My choice is going to have to be Claymore. Oh, I was so pissed at the end of that, yeah. Yeah, they kind of got to a point, and they're just like, we have to kind of make something up and end it, just because. I don't actually know the reasons if, if it was like they just cut funding or they cut cut up to the manga. I assume it's that one. But it wasn't but even I mean, a good ending, though. It was, it was no. more of a cliffhanger than what it could have been anyway. Yeah. <sighs> but if they ever do, like, restart it, they'll have to redo that War in the North arc, which I really like that arc to begin with because it introduces one of my... Well, not introduced, but really shows off one of my favorite characters, Miria, in that arc. Yeah. I'll probably end up... Because I... At one point, I, I started looking at the manga, and I'll probably end up reading the manga at one point, and probably start from the beginning, but uh, because I really want to know what happens after yeah, that. I recommend it. Okay. Right. It's definitely one of the, it was the show that really got me hooked on, like, femme vital characters, because, like, the whole cast is just chicks with giant swords cutting monsters in half. Well, one thing I was actually rather pleased with, which is kind of weird coming from me, but, uh, I, I was actually kind of kind of happy that it was different because it didn't have like a shit ton of etchy. Even when it shows people like shows some of them naked and everything, they're fucking like cut up and scarred. And it's it, it very much shows a different side of the um, I guess the nudity or whatever. And it doesn't right. like accentuate it and make it like one of the biggest parts of it or anything, which I found at least for anime. Well, most of the ones I've watched anyway, very very interesting and different. Just fucking weird again, like I said. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually kind of that's actually kind of an important point in the story, which they don't cover in the anime, as to why like those guys have to check on their bodies and stuff. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, I never watched that. You should but watch you, it. But you want to know something that I have watched? What's that, Dan? This is a segue, by the way. Yes, I noticed it was pretty yeah. good, and you ruined it now <laughs> by pointing it out. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, Sakurasu no Pech na Kanojo. Which is also known yes. as the pet girl of Sakurasu or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. That one was so good. I forgot about that. Yes. And this is a series that CJ recommended to me, I bet. Because you know, like, I, don't, I don't even quite remember him recommending, but I know that he did. And then the kind of the series name just stuck in my head for a while until I eventually watched it, like last year or something. Or a little bit longer than actually two years ago. Shit. Okay. I did watch it, and I fucking love the series, like, a lot. Um. That's it's another really... one actually had a lot of really they they weren't as unique as some of the, like uh, Spice and Wolf or anything, but they actually had a lot of really unique characters. Like yes. some of them were they they did a different spin where it was like they did cliches and everything, but in a different way, which was kind of cool. Yeah, and so, something that I kind of think as was that like although a lot of the plot points started as kind of cliches, they had kind of an unexpected ending or something like that. Or you know, there are a lot of times where you, let me put it like this: you kind of expect. That after trying hard and trying hard and trying hard, they're going to make it at one point or whatever. And that doesn't necessarily happen with all the characters of this show. And I'm, I'm leaving it kind of like, without being too specific on purpose and everything, obviously. Although I had already said a lot. But the um. annoying part of this, though, is that on the very last episode of this show, they set up a second season. They introduce yep. new characters. They, like, they keep a lot of plot points open on purpose. So that there will be a second season. And there is source material for a second season. You know, there are, there are light novels that have been written of the series of material that, that keeps going and everything. And it just never happened. And I have not heard of it ever happening. And I have, I, I, this is one where I've actually also seen like people on the internet complaining and making, you know, not Kickstarter, but the thing where like everybody's signing something so that like they can get like 10,000 signatures or whatever. Petition. And they ask. Yeah, a petition, mm-hmm. yeah. I've seen them starting, like, petitions online and everything, but it doesn't seem like it, it got anywhere. And I'll be really sad if it never gets a second season. Yeah, that, that, that is one I actually completely forgot about, or else it would actually be on my list here. Because that one, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was actually the one who recommended it to you at, like, the beginning of Final Project, around then? Yeah, probably. And, um, but yeah, that one... That one surprised the hell out of me with how good it was. But there, there's another one I just thought of that you may actually like a lot, Dan. It's, it's much more. It has a lot more closure at the end, but it has a similar type of feel where some of the characters like try hard to do stuff and they just fail anyway at the end and everything and and things like that. Like 
Uh, I'm, I'm trying to be a little more vague, but I, I think you would r- really like it. Um, it's called uh, White Album 2. Like, it has a first season, I believe, but it doesn't really... It's it's its own, like, standalone story. It's one of the ones that's like a sequel, but it's like a different, completely different cast and everything, I believe. I could hmm. be wrong. I haven't actually seen the first season. Oh, but okay. You should definitely watch the second season because that, that end is going to fucking, like... That end is going to, like, tear your heart apart. It's... Right. Oh, it hurts. Or actually, I may I may end up just actually recommending that for the for the next round of stuff here. I don't know. Why would yeah. you want to tear my heart out, CJ? Because it's so That's... good. It's such a good story. <laughs> Clannad already did such a great job of that. Well, I think it's good to kind of alternate. You know, like because when you're yeah. seeing a lot of happy stuff all the time, I, I I at least get the feeling that I want to see something that is going to make me a little more sad or j- just like a more realistic story at least or something like that. Oh, this one's definitely realistic with how it ends up with everything. That's it's actually one of the really strong points is like it it shows some of the shit that happens with some some loves and everything where they just don't work out and it shows people getting right. crushed and everything. It's fucking brutal. But don't worry, Clecker, it's they they don't have shit go near as wrong as Clan Ed. It's not that sad. <laughs> Okay. Most of it's case... actually happy or like conflict stuff where no one's happy, but like some people are mad. So nobody's really sad though. But it's if you made it through Clan Ed, you'll make it through this fine. Okay. Right. So I, I may end up actually throwing that in for the for the next round here because it's I think it's a twelve episode one, so I'll probably do that with something else. Cool. Yeah, uh, we could do that yeah, for sure. All right. And I definitely have shows that kind of follow that theme. If we want to make a a theme round again. I, I don't oh. know if a full theme round of that would be good for us, man. <laughs> Sadly, I, don't know about that. I do not have a manga for you guys that is like that. I have manga for that. I, I actually have plenty of manga like that. Right. Anyway. I would say we should probably stay away from teams for a while. But yeah, if we eventually want to grab one just something like that again, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'll move on to one of my one of the ones I found that needed uh, another season was... Um, this is mainly because I actually read all the manga and actually followed the manga all the way to the end over the course of like a year or two. Uh, I'd read it every time it came out, and it was uh, Mysterious Girlfriend X. Like this one had, it it still has one of the like weirdest like I, I guess big plot points to draw people in. It's something that differentiated it. But the funny thing is, it actually pushed a lot of people off because this one ends up starting out where. Through, through a series of events, the main character gets, like, literally addicted to his, like, the, the main girl's drool and has to, like, taste it, like, every day or something or else he fucking gets super sick and all that and gets bedridden and everything. But it ends up being actually one of the, one of the, um, better, like, more daily romance type of things where it's one of the ones that, like, not a whole lot of stuff happens in the story, even all the way to the end. It was fucking like crazy with that like or not crazy it was very less like progression than i would have hoped for all the way to the end of the manga but it right. ended up actually being a really nice really cute story and they could have with how much manga they had they probably could have done another two to three seasons and they just they just never picked it up again after the first season i mean it was actually like i said it actually ended up being really good compared to what what i originally thought it would be and even without the progression which is usually a pretty big important part for me um, it ended up being really good anyway. Like, have any of you actually even given that one a try? I it's, never have. It's in my to watch list. But I think, I'll be a hundred percent honest. The moment you said like that, he didn't get much progression. I got a little turned off. But if you say it compensates with other things, then and uh, that that could be interesting. Uh, it's it's one of the ones that's really weird about that, where there's still almost no progression through the entire story, but it's very little bits. So it's one of the ones where it's like. Oh my god, they actually like held hands for a minute and it just gets you giddy for like the next month waiting on the next release of it. <laughs> right, right. I it's get one it. of those okay. because of how how little they give it to you. It's it's really nice when it does come. Cool. So Yeah, I think I think Clicker will like that. Especially Probably. all the all all the dual swapping and all that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Go away, CJ. Yeah, the, there ends up actually being a really weird dynamic nope. of that where people like whenever they do that and they actually swap uh, because of how like in tune they are and how how close they are to each other. They actually end up can feeling what the other character feels and like pseudo thinking what they're thinking and all that, and it ends up creating a really weird dynamic with that. Like to, to give an example, at one point, um, because the main character sees her her underwear like earlier that day, 
and they're white. She ends up like essentially taking Israel and everything and tasting it and all that. And she ends up just seeing nothing but white whenever she like does that because that's all he's thinking about. <laughs> and it was it's kind of funny. Like you see stuff oh, like God. that happen every now and then. That's all right. Ow. Uh, CJ. <laughs> it's it's not it's not as bad as I, I made it sound there. It's actually okay, really good. Don't worry, CJ. I'm gonna try to take that out of context. <laughs> of course you are, Dad. God damn it. In some way. <laughs> At least I was talking about him doing all this stuff and not me this time. <laughs> and uh, waited to set that up. Yep, there it is. <laughs> anyway, moving on, clicker, another one of yours. Alright, one of mine, and this is actually a series I've been watching recently, is known as, uh, anime known as Air Gear. So Air Gear is a, for those who don't know, is kind of like, um, Sounds like help me out here. Uh, uh, we talked about it last time. Yes. The roller skating, like underground rollerblading, kind of like Jet Set Radio, except people fight and shit. Okay, yes. So not and there's <laughs> yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of like fights and crazy shit that happens and magic and all this shit. And right as the series got like really good, they stopped. Like right as the main character got like almost like three hundred underlings, they were like more than that. It was more than that, but it was a lot of underlings. Like he actually got a giant team to merge with his rollerblade team. And they just stopped. It was it was done. Well, it's like they set up a plot point and they cut it off. But if you go into the manga and you go a couple pages forward, shit literally starts hitting the fan left and right, and you're like, "Whoa, Wait, whoa!" Shit, shit literally hits the fan. Yes, I mean like <laughs> literally. <laughs> no, it's disgusting. spinning around everywhere. <laughs> oh god, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> What's the matter, CJ? <laughs> <laughs> just, just you guys sometimes, man. Ah, uh, anyways, it it stopped right before it got really good, and they made an OVA that kind of did some justice, but it didn't cover no. nearly as much as it right. should have. Yeah. So it the that series could have benefited from even just a couple more episodes, really, but they. They didn't do it. Hmm. I, I'll have to check that one out at one point. I might. I might just you read the manga. Might or like the yeah, main might character. The manga. Why? Why would I like the main character, Clucker? Because he's extremely pervy at some at points. Oh, oh, thanks. That that says a lot about what you think of me, Dan. <laughs> not Dan Clucker. Yep, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, that's something Dan would say. say. Yeah, CJ. So you should be called pervert. By I me, will but... say one name, and it will be Isay, and that is it. You say it's high the main character DxD. from High School DxD. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if he's if he's that type, that's a little bit different. I thought you were talking more. Uh, what the fuck's the character? Whatever. <laughs> uh, that's that, <laughs> that's not as bad Probably. as I was thinking. Okay. No, they're they're about the same actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so that's the one I would choose. So Roberto, your next one. Next, uh, Full Metal Panic. That one got, like, a season, a filler season, like a comedy season, and they went back to to do, like, a season two, and that one was really good. They really outdid themselves compared to the previous two seasons, and I really just want to see more of that because they kind of left it up in the air for a lot of the plot points, mainly between the the romance between the main character and the female character. All right. Yeah, I've kind of got nothing on that. I didn't watch any of that. It's it's Mecha, but not... Yep, kind of like how Cookie is, is not really about the mechs, it's more about the people, but it is still mecha in that sense. By the yeah, way, since Roberto right. said Code Geass, I just want to bring up Code Geass had an awesome closure, but it is the best anime ever made, so it should have more seasons, just because the world deserves to see but, more Code Geass. But and just see more of the best. loot, specifically. <laughs> but Dan, Bakamonogatari. Yeah. No, I like Code I'm Geass. I'm sure they're working than... on it. <gasps> no, no, we're saying Bakamonogatari is much better than Code Geass. Oh my god. They can't say said... that before they have watched it. Although, I, I'm pretty sure Roberto probably agree, and granted, like, I'm not necessarily saying one is better than the other, because both are in my top five, but, yeah. See, I just have a, the... an interesting attachment to Code Geass. Here's, here's the problem, Dan. Code Geass doesn't have the best girl, Kaiki. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. 
I think we've been saying that a lot on the past two episodes. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> Does it matter? Okay. Yeah. Anyways, so, Dan, what's your second one? Sure. I have a few here that I think I could go through really quick, and then maybe we could uh, go one more time around the table just with less detail. And just are, Would you guys be fine with that? Kind of just like... Sure. I, mean, I, I have a few as well. I mean, if you're, if you're going to throw out a few, then everyone else is, and it's probably going to be longer than an hour and a half. No, well, what I'm saying is that I'm just going to, like, pretty much say the names in, a like, a short comment or something for mine now, and then you guys could... Anyway, saying we're not going to know what he's talking about. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, all right, so, Nisekoi, not that I really liked the series, I thought he had a good start, and then it ended up getting kind of boring, but the thing about Nisekoi is that they, it kind of ended with a lot more questions than, than what they answered in the actual mm-hmm. show, so I did get very curious to see what would happen next, and... Who the fuck well, actually is the girl? Spoilers. Well, well, Dan, with that, they're they're making more the, of that. Yeah, there is a oh. second season coming up oh, okay. in like I a month. Oh, okay, that's good. All right. Dude, get on top of your shit, man. Come on. Come down, come down, come down. High School of the Dead. You guys remember that one? Ah, Meh. yes. Meh. I couldn't care. Yeah, I couldn't what? care. What? Really. Okay. So, yeah, it was okay. I, I don't want to say, like, I, I wouldn't call it, like, a masterpiece or anything, but it was just, like one of the shows that I had the most fun while I was watching, and I do remember that it ended kind of on a cliffhanger of some sort without really, like, doing anything. Uh, And just to finish off mine here, I just want to say Danganronpa, which CJ doesn't like, but... Oh, God, it was so bad. Yeah. (laughs) But just essentially because it ends, and you didn't see up to the ending, by the way, but it ends without... I don't care. (laughs) Yeah, it ends kind of, like, in a weird place as well. And I don't even know if there's source material to continue that story. I think the source material that they have is a full different story. But it's a second Robert- game. Yeah, Roberta would know more about that. I'm, I've only just started playing it, so... Oh, okay. But it does end in a place where you're like, oh, okay, so, what now? Anyway, yeah, the, that's about it for mine. And then mostly, like, just some that are gonna release anyway, like Yuri Yuri and Attack on Titan are, are other main ones, but those will be released, so... Okay, yeah. so I'm done. Now you guys can go and do whatever. All right, I'll, I'll go and do my second one here then. Um, so yeah, pro- probably one of the ones, because this one's actually a little bit weird, mainly just because I've heard from other people who have watched it. Apparently there's not a second season of it, and there really should be with where it ends. Because um, I, I actually just read the manga, because I, I didn't want to deal with like getting halfway through and being on a big cliffhanger. And it's actually a Dead Man Wonderland. Ah, yes. Like, Dead Man Wonderland, the, the manga actually has a really good close, in my opinion, anyway. And it was fucking fantastic all the way through to the end, and it ended up getting, like, it had twists and everything, and shit was crazy. And it, it's one of the few that actually has a lot of fighting that I really like anyway, because the, the characters are were, were interesting enough to get me drawn into it. And you see all these different types of, um, like, emotional, like, trauma and everything on these people, and just... Like it's it's weird. You, I I would highly recommend reading it instead of watching it because I know the the manga has a good ending. Like I, yeah, but the anime has one of the best openings ever. I might, I might have to look at that thing because I haven't seen the open. I haven't actually watched any of the anime because like, uh, what's a good way to do this? How how would I guess how would you describe essentially how it ends without spoiling too much for these two? You didn't no, Roberta. I thought you watched Dead Man Wonderland. No. Really? Oh. Okay. So I'm trying to well, figure out where it ends. Um, I can't. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't remember exactly the ending. Um, I do remember not liking the ending as much, uh, because it, I feel like it was almost as if like there was some closure, but it feels like the story could have continued. Um, okay. I'm not sure exactly where it ended. Yeah, that's that's very different than the manga. There there is no continuing, at least with the same characters. Uh, okay. So it's it's very different than that. All right. Anyway, I guess since um Dan kind of went through a few more of his, we'll just go ahead and go through and see if we can finish out a couple more of each of us. I'll I'll go ahead and go real fast since already I'm already here, I guess. Um Yeah. Another one I What? Sorry. No, I was just going to say yeah, that, that was the idea since essentially just to get your list out there, but without necessarily getting to a lot of detail into each one, that was all. All right. I mean, we haven't really been going into that much detail anyway. This this didn't quite work out how I planned it to, but uh, yeah. Oh. 
Anyway. Sorry, sorry. 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 Random podcast. Yeah. Nothing ever goes the way we plan it. Yeah. Anyway, um, some of the other ones on my list. Uh, one of the big ones, actually, because it just ended in such a shitty place, is Blue Exorcist. <laughs> because that one was... That's another one of the few, like high action ones that I really enjoyed because of how how different it was at least to yeah, me they just made up an ending yeah like cuz the the fucking i think the rest of the source material has a lot more and i i just even if they just kept going even if they didn't make up the ending whatever they could have kept going and doing a lot more off of just what is there cuz it's one of the ones that ends in like a terrible cliffhanger where so many things could happen and it could get so interesting and cool and yeah i just i was not happy with that ending at all and that one actually does have also actually two of the best opening songs. Fucking great. Yeah, that one didn't get the ending it deserved. I wanted to know more about their past and I wanted to I wanted to see more of the sons. Like mm-hmm. I wanted cuz you got to see like two of them, but I think there was like what four or something like that. I wanted to see them all and you never got to see any of them. Yeah. It was like, "Oh, that sucks." But that one didn't really get the ending it wanted. Yeah, it but, was um, pretty bad. I know another series that I watch, and this is that I watched and was sad when it ended, was Batum. Yeah. Batum, which it's... the manga is still going on. But uh, I was sad that it ended the way it did. That That's one of the ones where it seems like it'd be a little more difficult, I guess, to really do more seasons of it, at least without it getting stale. And it, it, I don't know. Have uh, you read the ma- manga at all? No. Okay. If you read the manga, it doesn't get that stale. It actually, like, it improves upon it because they not only make some new interesting type of grenades, but the story advances more. And, like, they actually go after the people that have, like, caused all this shit in the first oh. place. Oh. That could actually and be really good. It gets interesting. Okay. So, it's, well, hopefully it, that that one's not really that old yet. Maybe they'll maybe they'll pick it back up at some point. I got it. That one also had a really good opening. Yeah that that opening is actually I actually looked up the band that did that opening and one of their songs is actually my ringtone. Actually, no, I just changed my ringtone to database. <laughs> it's great. Which it should be. <laughs> Every time someone calls, database, database, it's like, yes! I don't want to answer the phone now. Just living in a database, whoa! Yeah. Yeah. Good song. So, Roberta, anyway, do you have any last ones? I've actually got a couple more I want to throw in here. I wasn't. I had some other ones and everything. I wanted to go ahead and get them in here first. Um, I just didn't want to cut you off while you're in the middle of a uh, beers there. Um, I have two other ones. One of them actually was kind of funny because it didn't actually end the first season. They kind of just cut it off at 10 and didn't let it go anymore and just gave it this terrible fucking like quick thrown together ending. And it was, um, okay, get ready for this fucking name here. My mental choices are completely interfering with my school romantic comedy. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's one that just like, I wish they would have at least finished the first season properly because it actually had a really good, unique, like, uh, main plot point where I think I've talked to you guys about it a couple times where like the the main guy every now and then has these choices pop into his head and everything was like choose this or this or like he ends up getting like massive migraines out of nowhere that don't stop until he chooses one and um, it ends up being really entertaining with some of the ones because usually they're they're either super embarrassing or super like pervy stuff or whatever that's going to get him slapped by somebody and it's it's fucking great and yeah that that's one I wish I had more and um yeah another one just because it's one of my one of my other like top 5 favorites is uh which I, I don't really know how they do more of it except going down different paths kind of like Amagami SS did because it does have a really good uh closing to it is Shuffle cuz Shuffle uh, like I fucking loved that one I loved the characters it was fucking great Should have gone to see you man should have gone to see you No he made the right choice Hey no He by far made the right choice <laughs> But Sia is so crazy. No, no. Asha's so good. Have you seen that crazy side? Have you seen? I don't what like that the crazy <laughs> girls like you do. Asha was. I like he's trying to perfect. convince you. Like she was so good. Like uh, Asuna was awesome. Do not get me wrong. She Asuna. was great. Was there an Asuna in that? Wait, did I say Asuna or did I say Asuma? 
It's neither of those. Neither it's of Asha. Those. Oh, Asha. Never the fucking green haired girl's Asha. ASA. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, that that's pretty much all of mine though that I could think of right now. Like, I I really would have just liked to see more of him and him and Asha at the end there. That would have been pretty great. Anyway, we'll go ahead and go to since you're you're already done with yours, I believe. Clegg is going. Move over to Roberto. Okay. So, desert punk. <laughs> it was it was a really funny anime and then they set up like a plot point towards the end of the story and you're like it was a really big plot point too i won't say what it is and then at the end the last episode they completely flip that the result of that plot point and you're like well shit now what so i would love to see more desert punk yeah desert punk i'd, I'd be okay with more because that's one of the few like just stupid gag ones that i've yeah. loved I never watched uh, that one, but I do have to say that something that has desert and punk on the name sounds pretty awesome. The, this dude is is very perverted, and his goal is yeah. to like get a lot of women and loves women with huge boobs. And yeah, that's so totally what I imagined when I heard desert punk. <laughs> he's worse than he's say. What? He There's yeah. no way. Both of us worse? are saying he's worse than he's say. Have you not what? seen it? Worse? I've I never think seen desert not a dog. Oh he's worse than he's say. This dude's worse than both of those. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man. Yeah. I wouldn't oh, quite say put is... together, but he's worse than both of them. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's just insane. Alright, anyways. Anything else from you, Roberto? Yes. Uh I will say something to wrap this up. That we should not despair. Because an anime called Mushishi got it took eight years to get season two out for that. And I wouldn't even call that show like a one of the bigger ones. It was definitely a, a cult hit. That's so, probably why it took eight years. Yeah, so, I mean, there's always hope, guys. There's always hope. Uh, out of all of <laughs> them we talked about here, the one I want the most is just Spice and Wolf. Yep. yep. Agreed. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, think we all can agree yeah. on that. Oh, I would be so happy. Oh, if they if they announced that, I'd be like, all right, I'm so happy. Like, ah. Uh, yeah. It'd be so nice. Anyway, the... Yeah, this has been the Pseudo Random Podcast. Um, I, I guess you can you can tell if if you like it or not by now. I'm assuming because I think it was like six, seven episodes, something like that. Oh, they couldn't. We're, they we're could not going to change very much. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say they could technically start at any point, right? So this maybe yeah. could be someone's first episode. Yeah, In maybe. that case, it was probably a kind of a weird episode, by the way, because <laughs> oh, we yeah, did do a lot of weird, references to, to previous episodes. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So um. Yeah, let's go around and figure out where we can find everybody if they want to stalk us or whatever. Uh, I'm pretty much Boom Coffee on everything. Find me on, you know, Twitter and all that shit. My anime list, in case you want to see how how low I rated your favorite animes and yell at me from there or whatever. <laughs> like but, I um, usually do. Yeah, you do, because you're a dick, but whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's where you can find me. Um, actually, I should probably start with where you can find the fucking podcast at. Because we actually have different avenues to actually have stuff out on now. You wanna you wanna go over those, uh, Dan or Roberto, which one of you? Sure. You can check us out on Twitter at pseudo underscore pod. You can check our WordPress blog at pseudorandompodcast.wordpress.com. And I don't think we should go over the other ones yet, CJ. <laughs> well, I mean, we're up on There's iTunes. iTunes. And stuff. Yeah, iTunes is oh fine. yeah, that's that's right. The iTunes just just search for pseudo random, and you should yeah. probably find it. I mean, we're working on to get on some other stuff now, too. We've got some stuff in the works for that, so... Yeah. More distribution stuff. And, yeah, yeah like I said, follow us on Twitter and everything if you want to just see stuff about the show, random things, whatever. Um, and, yeah, tell them where they can find all your stuff at, Dan. Sure. If they want to stalk you. <laughs> yeah, if you want to read all the sexy words that are right every day, just follow me at Lima Daniel <laughs> on Twitter. Uh... All the, all the quote-unquote sexy words, yeah. yeah. <laughs> quote-unquote sexy words. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Roberto, where are you going to find you at? And what's it's, your name on it and all that? You can find me at RJR2992. Right. Good, there we go. And Clecker? Me? You can find me at Oclecker uh, on Twitter or... I'm pretty much known as Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S, everywhere else. You want to so. tell them how to spell O-Clicker, too, because your name's not really that common. 
<laughs> All right, fine. My O Clecker is spelled O H K L E K E R. There you go. Okay, you get great. to find the meaning of life there. And We're actually I'll... practicing, helping Clecker practice for the spelling bee tournament that is going to, you know, couple yes. Yeah, because he's in fucking second grade or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody. It's been the Random Podcast. Hopefully we'll. We'll have you joining in next week and everything, which probably um, not. We're gonna be, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be watching. How, how many fucking episodes does Saber Marionette have? I don't even know. Twenty five. Okay, yeah, we're gonna be doing like twelve or thirteen Man. episodes of that. Yep. And, okay. Twelve. Uh, yeah. All right. Something. Well, I don't. Know. Hopefully, I can do that. Either way, we will come back next week with episodes. Yeah. Goodbye. Right. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See ya. See ya.